Good day, folks. Snip's back. Got Ratty up on the lift. Uh, didn't really do much since the last video. It's been pretty cold here. A lot of, a lot of hockey going on. Um, you see, I put some POR58 on the front uh, splitter here. Put on these two stabilizer who, uh, who diddies. They don't really do much. I mean, it's welded 1.8 steel. It doesn't flex a whole lot, but yeah, you know, I got a, a bit of a heat warp there from where I was, uh, before I welded the two together. You see it kind of went up. I'll have to bang it and straighten it out, but same on the other side. No big deal. Uh, spread a little bit of POR15 to keep the rust under control, and I spray it up underneath the back here because um, she's real rusty back there. I don't want it to rust more, but I don't care about the rust that's already there. So it just kind of seals it all in. What I'm looking at doing today, uh, the transmission of this thing is just bolted in. It's uh, the torque converter's not bolted up. Uh, no, no drive shaft, no shift linkage, no cooling lines. There's not even fluid in the transmission yet. So I probably should start addressing that. Uh, what I picked up for a cooler was this here unit. Got pretty good reviews. I've never used one with a with its own electric fan before. Uh, normally, I just get the normal grill ones that you put in behind your radiator, but there's not a whole lot of room there, so we ain't gonna do that. So I got this guy. Uh, it uses AN AN lines, and I got these guys here, which screw into the transmission. It's got a little rubber O-ring, and on that side, the tapered uh, AN fitting. Okay, so that's what we're gonna screw in there right now. Get these put in and then figure out where I'm going to put this guy. There's no room in that engine bay. I noticed they're editing up videos that that light I got, it uh, has three settings. And right now it's blinding me. But if I put it on the low setting, I get lines. It's got something to do with the LED frequency messing up the camera. So I got to leave it super bright, apparently. Anyways, you can see there I got the bottom line off. I'm thinking I need to take these out. Because that's a taper fitting. But that will not work with. I was hoping I could leave them. But they're not going to screw in there. So I need to take these completely out. Not just the, the line part. That sucks. I would have done that when the transmission was out on the table if I'd known. I can honestly say I've never used PTFE lines on a transmission before. So this is uh, new ground for me. New territory. Ugh. Oh, that came out easy enough. So you can see there's what they got. It's just to protect the aluminum. Instead of having the flared line directly into the transmission, which, you know, you could tear the threads out pretty easy, they put that in. This one had Teflon tape, and then there's a big flat washer. That seals it up. Ah, fingers! I already put my fancy dipstick in. There's the other one. Okay, so these ones have a rubber seal on them instead of a flat washer and Teflon tape. That's my dipstick tube. I haven't got it attached to the firewall yet. So every time I touch it, it bangs. Okay. Now we just gotta figure out where we want that cooler put. Well, I got these two. Pieces of one by two. That's your box mount and the other box mount. And this is actually put in for the fuel tank. And you can see there's the bolts that hold the fuel tank in. Two of them. The other two are up front. These ones I put all the way through. Actually, there's the fuel tank right there. I think like that right there. Yeah, I like that. Got nowhere else to put it. Well, I mean, I can put it anywhere back here, but drive shaft. And that's way up there, so that'll clear. I think that's a good spot. Makes it a little more complicated if I ever want to take a box out with uh, these transmission lines, but it's not the end of the world. Oh. I thought I heard a big old diesel coming in the driveway. Oh, that was the beast. Getting your, getting your oh, looks good, man. You want to put a bumper on? Oh, yeah, man, that's cool. So we'll uh, measure this up. I guess I only really need 
flat bar. I could put, I could just do tabs, but I'm gonna go all the way across and just weld in some flat bar and drill some holes, and get that thing put on. It's funny when people uh, get to mount and stuff like this, they, uh, they'll build some giant quarter inch thick plate steel brackets or something, but they don't even realize that you're only screwing it to like 1 16th aluminum sheet metal here. Like, what's the point? Like, if it's gonna rip off, it'll be this. You can build that as solid as you want, but still, this is your weak point. So it's no sense overbuilding this, is what I'm saying. All over to the scrap steel bin. Let's see. I think I need some light and my glasses. Now I'm just gonna use this, uh, I think it's what, inch and a half, one eighth flat bar that I got sitting around. I just weld it across there. Should be the same measurement because I put all this stuff in the same. But you never know. I think it's just about time for a new blade. That one's looking pretty dull. Alright, let's get these zipped into place. Good enough. That ain't going anywhere. I did bloody chin ups off of those. If I could still do a chin up. Well, let's see. I had a spark land on my lip. Spark go down my sleeve and one down my neck. Ah, I just love welding upside down. That's done though. All right, now we just gotta mark the holes and drill. Okay, I got uh, four holes drilled. I put in these uh, quarter inch nut certs. It's like a capture nut, except it's not welded in. And it's great in a place like this where I couldn't really get in behind. To, I mean, I can get my fingertip in there, but to try to hold a nut would just be ridiculous. So these are a good option instead of having to weld in nuts or tap. You know, if you, that's one eighth, you're not gonna put taps, uh, threads into one eighth steel. But uh, with these here, if they strip out, it's no big deal. You just drill them out with a 3 8 again and put in a new one. Anyways, I got the back two in. We're just going to put the front two in now and see if this thing is solid or not. Normally I wouldn't have tightened that up that far, but it looks like it's lined right up. There we go. That's not bad. All right, let me show you what we got done here. Okay, so we got our AN fittings here. Got to make up some elbows or whatever. I could actually go straight probably, or maybe a 45, I don't know. I'm gonna bring it over where the fuel line is here and zip them all together along the frame up to the tranny. While I was planning this here, Menagerie out. I got my battery cables, my one gauge battery cables, positive and negative, my fuel line, and now I'm going to have transmission lines all running to the back. That's a lot of bracketing to get these things where they're not sitting on the exhaust or, you know, a sharp corner of steel. So, what I did was I fired up the old CAD program in the 3D printer and blasted off some of these that I made up. Pretty simple. Um, got two holes in it. Space for transmission lines, battery line, and fuel line, all in one. And I'm thinking what I'm going to do is get some more of that one inch flat bar and just bend me some tabs off of here that I can bolt on and I can sit them like that and run all my lines well clear of the exhaust. Shouldn't be any clearance issues at all. Putting them along the, the edge of the frame here like that is the next best thing to tuck them in the frame. Yeah, let's see if we can figure out some way to get these to do my job for me. I'm a little concerned with the plastic and the heat from the exhaust here, but I honestly, I don't think these are a problem. I made them on ABS, so it's like 205 degrees just to make this, to melt the ABS or not. I don't think I'm going to get 205 degrees radiating temperature constant up here that enough to melt that. If it does, well, we'll make something out of steel. 
And so I'm just taking a one and a half flat bar. I already measured out from one of the existing holes that's in the frame from something that's no longer in use. I have a much bigger drill press, an older one. I just haven't bothered to bring out. This little Ryobi is a woodworking one. It's, it doesn't quite have the power for boring through the steel. That's just a belt slipping. So something like that. Now I gotta go out to 3.8 so I can put in nut certs. Brand new titanium. That should about cut through there real good. Alright, so now I got two brackets. My holes are actually lining up. Look at that. It's a, it's a miracle. Cut that one off. Missed it. Now I gotta bend over. Ugh. Okay, I've been going on about these nut search things long enough, and I don't think I've ever actually showed you. Now these here would be easy enough for me to put a nut on top, but I do like these nut certs. I think they're quite the time saver. So we're going to go ahead and slam some in because they take that long to do it. There you go. That's in there. So for a quarter inch, you got to drill a three eighths hole. So that's really only the the weird thing is how big the hole has to be. So you can see there the way they squeeze down. Just like a rivet. Now they ain't coming out. I've never really had one slip, but again, they're not, I mean, you're not building this to mount an engine. It's for smaller stuff. Like the way I keep using these, I'm thinking I'm gonna end up buying an air tool version or something soon, because I put a lot of these things in. So there's gonna be my two brackets that come out from the frame. I'll sit those 3D printed things on and hold my lines in place. Let's go see about bolting them in. So if I can get two in here, that should more than enough to hold everything I need held in place. Yeah, they're not going nowhere. Not for what they are anyways. Oh, I think that'll work just fine. Except if I do that and reach anything. for now because I want to mess around with my wires and lines so they get them nice and neat. I think it's going to make up another one. As my lines are coming out here. I'm going to go in behind the header and that would be a good spot and I can put it right off this transmission cross member. So I'll put a 90 bend on it, get it up nice and high. And we'll do that. All right, well there's the bracket I made up. I still got to put my nut certs in it, but I'm just testing it to make sure it's even going to work. And that is perfect. Couldn't ask for a better fit than that. Let's go put some nut certs in that and get on with this. Okay, nut certs are inserted. I have to get this thing woofed it up. Oh, I swear, either I'm getting taller or that floor is getting farther away every year. To the point where dropping the tool is like, oh god, not again. <laughs> what do you do, right? <gasps> Son of a... You know what? There we go. That is going nowhere. <laughs> okay, well I'm liking that. Let's get these buttoned up in here. All right, good enough for now, I guess. I gotta put the transmission lines in there yet, so I don't wanna go too tight. Okay, so I got me some AN6 line. This is the nylon braided instead of the steel woven, uh, which is fine. And I just put an AN fitting on it there, a 90. That's gonna come off the transmission side, and I'm gonna measure up and cut the other end. La 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 la. 
Now none of these are tight yet, so this will slide right in. We'll need to unbolt the whole mess just to do this. Because I was thinking ahead. Right there. Well, you need a black marker. It's not going to show up now, is it? Okay, I got my 90 elbow put on, my AN6 fitting for the transmission side. And this is going to be the cooler side, the 45. You can see I still got to screw it in. I just I put my line into the female piece. Now I got the male piece here. Just started the threads. Let's put that thing together. So a little bit of oil in there helps these go in. And they're real simple. All you do is bottom them out. Once they're tight, that's it. That's a good seal. And so now I am actually going to have to loosen these off because those don't fit through anymore. Okay, well, it looks like I'm about done what I can do at the moment. Uh, my A and sex line, as you can see, I'm a little short. Um, I originally, when I measured it, I was going to put that cooler up in the normal spot behind the radiator or in front of the radiator. But the grill sits right up against the radiator and the electric fan on the radiator sits almost up against the blower pulley. So this, it wouldn't fit. So I ended up jamming it back there and now I'm about 18 inches short, which bugs me because now I gotta go buy more. But you get the idea. So I made the brackets, I made the 3D printed uh, retainers. None of these are tight because obviously I still gotta put one line in. But that's the general gist of it. I might make just another one of these up so I can clamp this just to make it look a little cleaner. I still got to wire up the cooler. Uh, real easy. Ground and a positive. Uh, you could put these through a sensor and a relay and all that and have it come on and off but I'm just gonna put it to a toggle switch on the on the console and when I start the truck let the tranny warm up for a minute or two, flick the switch on and be done with it. It'll, it'll run. End story. So keep it simple. That's my way. I don't want to mess with relays and everything else. It's just one more wire that's going to complicate my life. So anyways, that'll be it for today. I'm thinking we got a big storm coming in and it's turning gold again. Yeah, that big storm. I don't know if you heard that. It's blowing pretty good out there. Anyways, like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.